Hey all, today we're going to jump back a little bit and talk more about confidence intervals. So take a quick break on hypothesis tests to talk about confidence intervals. Um, back to proportions, but this time we're going to have two samples and we're going to compare two proportions when in the past we just had one sample and one proportion to create a confidence interval about. So we are going to create what we call two proportion Z intervals. Um, I want you to take a second and read this scenario about carpal tunnel. And then we're going to create a 95% confidence interval for the difference in these two uh, uh, healing processes. So they can address this carpal tunnel sy syndrome with either surgery or with wrist splints. And some people might choose wrist splints because they don't want to deal with surgery. And some people might want to do surgery because they think it'll work better. And so they have a, 176 patients and half of them or 88 of them got the surgery and the other half uh, got the wrist splints. And so what we have was an experiment done here. And we're going to hope that it was random because if we want to create a confidence interval, you already know by now, we have to satisfy some assumptions and conditions. And those assumptions and conditions are going to look a lot like they have in the past, specifically in this case for proportions. As always, we need to either have a random sample or to have a randomly assigned experiment. We're going to have to assume that happened because I'm not sure it said it here. But uh, we'll assume that they randomly assigned the 88 people to surgery and the other 88 to uh, the wrist splints. We need to have less than 10%. So this is these 176 people will represent less than 10% of all people who have carpal tunnel. And even uh, more than that, we need these groups of people to be independent of each other. So we can't, uh, we can't have the two groups of people um, having a relationship of some sort. So the 88 people who got surgery and the 88 people who wore the wrist splints uh, don't have any effect on how one of another are healing. And so we'll say those groups are independent of each other. We have to satisfy NP and NQ. And in this scenario, we have to do it twice because we have to have um, at least 10 successes and at least 10 failures in both groups. So in both groups, we want to have at, to expect at least um, 10 people to heal and 10 to not. And um, so that would be us checking our NP and NQ. So let's do that. I want to do something uh, sort of unique to this. We haven't had to do this before. We have two different P hats, so we need to be specific. So I want to identify that I have one P hat for surgery and one for splints. And so I actually want to call that out so that uh, – for the rest of the problem, I could just use p-hat surgery and p-hat splint and know what it means. And so 80% of our surgery patients had success. 54% of the splint patients had success. And so we can calculate NP and NQ for each. And so that means that sev uh, close to 70 people in the surgery were successful and 47 or 48 people in the splint category were successful and all these numbers are greater than or equal to 10. So the important thing is that you're checking NP and NQ for both groups. So now we can actually start building the interval. And before our interval was our sample proportion p hat plus or minus some critical value z star times the standard deviation and so that's going to be the same idea but it's going to be a little modified because we have two different proportions so instead of just regular old p hat over here we're going to find the difference between the two z star is still the same that we were calculating 
And then before, our standard deviation was p hat times q hat over n. And so we have to do that for both of our groups, and we add those together before we square root. So in our specific example, it looks something like this. I just added in the, the surgery and splint. And um, there's no real reason why I did surgery first other than I know that the p hat for surgeries was larger. And so when I do this subtraction, I'm going to get a positive number. You can do it the other way. When it comes to interpreting your interval, you're just going to word it a little bit different. So now I'm just going to plug in the values from the previous page. So I had all these on the previous page. That Z star, we get the same way for 95% confidence is 1.96. If you need a refresher on how to find that, just ask in class and I can absolutely do that. And then we're going to simplify until we get to our final interval. Interval. So my standard deviation is 0 0.068. And I multiply that by 1.96. I get approximately 0.1335. Add and subtract that to our our uh, sample difference, 0.26, and we have an interval. And so now the important thing, the thing that we always have to do is we have to explain, well, what does that interval mean? Remember, these are proportions, so these values represent percentages. So 12.65%, 39.35%. So as usual, we can say we're 95% confident. I put the uh, surgery patients first. So I'm going to talk about them. Since I've got a positive difference, that means that uh, in general, my surgery patients do better uh, as far as healing goes. So we're 95% confident the proportion of the patients who show improvement in carpal tunnel syndrome with surgery is between 12.7% and 39.4% higher than those who use wrist splints. That means that uh, the true proportion, uh, the true proportion difference between surgery and splints is in this interval. Well, we're 95% confident it's there. And because it was positive when I did surgery minus splints, that means that the surgeries are going to do better than the splints. If you did it the other way around, you would get a negative value for this, this first part. So we would get, uh, if we did 0.54 minus 0.8, we'd get negative 0.26. And so when we were drawing a conclusion, we could say something about how uh, the patients who used the wrist splints showed improvement um, between 12.7 and 39.4% lower than the, uh, the surgery patients. I usually like to try and have a positive value if I can. And so that's it for this lesson. Um, the procedure goes in the same order as we've been going in. The things that are different here are a couple extra assumptions and conditions, as well as uh, a little bit of an adjustment to the formula for calculating the confidence interval. If you have any questions, make sure you remember to ask, and uh, we will sort those out together.